The Sega Genesis has blast processing. Super Nintendo doesn't. So what's blast processing do? You're too slow. And uh, what if you don't have blast processing? <laughs> I think we get it, Sega. You can stop. Sega! Uh, can you please stop? In the 90s, before PlayStation and Xbox, there was Nintendo and Sega. And I'm sorry for using this Fallout quote again, but war? War never changes. This was Nintendo's first big competitor, because Sega had some really good ads, just like for the Game Gear, like I showed you. And yeah, the intro, for some of you that don't know, that was a Sega ad. Clearly, I filmed it, but clearly the voice is the regular commercial footage. But for the sales, there still seemed to be some loyal Nintendo fans, because the SNES sold 49 million units, the Genesis sold 30 million. And I know that for sales, it seems like Nintendo's the clear winner, but I think it's a little bit obvious that those ads did hurt the Super Nintendo because Nintendo for sure could have had like 60 million or 55 million units sold so clearly Sega did do some damage and this was a pretty big win for Sega this may not be their first console but it still was a huge success and it already built a fan base so now that the intro's done let's do the main event <laughs> Everyone, I, I think I have the right to say everyone, everyone knows what the bit wars are. And this was when graphics and specs and stuff were very important. Now it's sort of eh, because when you think about it, unless you're putting both of them together, you can't really tell the difference between 4K and 8K. But back then, it was a crucial thing to have. They wanted the best looking graphics. And Sega was like, all right, let's drop 16 bits. Because now Nintendo was like, all right, we need to release a new console because actually the NES was still selling well but Nintendo was like alright we need a refresh so the Super Nintendo came out and it featured something never before seen on a console yet the L and R pads yeah Nintendo also had the advantage of having better sound guess from who D did you guess yep it's Sony haha <laughs> this is uh one of the things that actually created the whole PlayStation situation <laughs> the PlayStation situation and like I said earlier Sega was very pushy and made ads to attack Nintendo and out of that came one of the best slogans of all time and this is coming from a Nintendo fan it's like if a Democrat said that a Republican candidate was clever and funny and smart. So what did Sega say? Well, they said, Genesis done! 16-bit arcade graphics. You can't do this on Nintendo! Genesis done! 16-bit sports action. You can't do this on Nintendo! Genesis does! Genesis does! Genesis does! Genesis does! Genesis does! What Nintendo? That was the seller. So let's compare the graphics and sound to each other on one of my personal favorites, Doom. So there clearly is a huge difference. One was visually better and one sounded better. The SNES mainly had one problem, and it was not the visuals of the game, it was the visuals of the console. The SNES had an overdose of blorim. This chemical is a fire retardant, and it is literally retarded, because they dipped it entirely in a gallon of fire retardant, and now it turns yellow, at least for most models, and there weren't really that many other issues. Well, there is one that's a little bit debatable, and that's the price. So the SNES costed $200, which, right now, this year, for a $200 console? What a steal! And it still was back then. But then, <laughs> Sega brought in the big gears, and they sold their new console for $150. And remember, for the most part, the specs were better, so this was like an uh-oh moment for Nintendo. And that's where the issue really began for Nintendo, but Sega was like, we're doing so good that we might as well make some more money by putting add-ons. So they released the Sega CD and the Sega 32X. That's the only way to play Doom, by the way. And let me tell you, those two things flopped. And they already came too late because there was rumor that there was going to be a Sega Neptune that would actually be a 32X on its own. 
That never happened, and that wouldn't even make any sense. Why would you do that? And you may be wondering, why doesn't it make any sense? Well, because they released the Sega Saturn, so it made it a little bit awkward to release the 32X. Yeah, already knowing that the Sega Saturn was already in Japan. And it made it a little bit more awkward knowing that the N64 and PS1 were already a big thing at this time, so it, it was very, very unnecessary. Sorry. This was the first true time that we've seen a console war, like what we're used to today. Except back then there was still a huge selection of consoles to choose from. Now the smaller, third-party, tiny competition is very, very weak. For some reason back then, Atari was still alive and had the Jaguar, and we'll get to that eventually. Then there was Panasonic, there was a lot of competitors. And it was very impressive to see Sega, a company that's still pretty young into the console phase, enter with such a big boom. The previous first couple of consoles, like the Master System, sold fairly well, but Sega was the first company to show the market that Nintendo is not everything. For Nintendo releasing the SNES, this was the first time that they would make a sort of sequel name, I guess you could say, to their console. And of course, it's not their first time, because it would happen again except it would fail. But the SNES did very, very well. It still has double the sales of the Xbox One, and it has some of the best games of all time. F-Zero, Super Mario World, Doom, Mario Kart, and yes, yes, bringing back Sega, they also had some great games. And one of the reasons that the Genesis really did succeed as a pioneer was really because of our little hedgehog buddy Sonic. Sonic really showed the power of the Genesis and how fast it could go. That's where the term blast processing came from. Developers found that you could slowly speed the hardware to make this very cool speedy effect that you see. Of course Nintendo didn't have this, but they did have some 3D eye tricks and they worked pretty great. Star Fox actually had some special hardware inside of its cartridge, so that's why the polygons and stuff look a little bit better than Donkey Kong Country or Doom. <laughs> Dang, Doom is being referenced so many times. And they really did change the console game forever. Sega's belief system is still being used till this day, technically. The more powerful, the better. So thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Ciao.